Human language is an extremely valuable and powerful tool. It enables us to perform a wide variety of functions and has led us to make ever greater discoveries. However, this ability to express ever more subtle, abstract, and complex thoughts has allowed other people to shape the subjective components of our lives into their own image. Unscrupulous individuals have learned to abuse language so that they may confuse, obscure, and mislead. While that may not be a problem in our day-to-day -day life and within our inner social circles, it becomes worrisome when an individual has a large following or holds political power and uses this abuse as a tactic. In George Orwell's essay, Politics and the English Language, he states political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable, and to give the appearance of solidity to pure wind. If one looks to his novel, 1984, the main premise is that those who control language control reality. Or as Newt Gingrich recently said on CNN, as a political candidate, I'll go with how people feel, and you can go with the theoreticians. In other words, people with political power can shape the feelings of those around them, and by extrapolation, they therefore can conjure facts the way a magician would pull a rabbit out of the hat. This ability to shape truth using vague language, which conceals the true meaning, is defined as doublespeak within George Orwell's novel. And it is a valuable thing to understand, as it has applications within the real world. It is meant to limit language such that the only thinking that can be done is within the muddled statements, and therefore that makes the task of discerning the true meaning of the speaker ever so difficult. In Hugh Rank's essay, The Teacher Heal Thyself Myth, he writes that to identify doublespeak, we have to analyze the language in the context of the whole situation within which it occurs. Therefore, there are five questions that should be asked. Who is saying what to whom? Under what conditions? Under what circumstances? With what intent? And finally, with what results? While things may appear correct with a cursory glance and free from doublespeak, asking these questions can help you dig up what lies below the surface. There are a minimum of four different types of doublespeak. There is jargon, gobbledygook or bureaucraties, inflated language, and euphemisms. I myself would argue for a fifth category, known as coded language or sometimes referred to as dog whistle politics. It is the usage of words to communicate a signal to a specific political realm that has a meaning for only them, and on the surface level, it appears completely without bias. In a recent Reddit Ask Me Anything, Green Party candidate Jill Stein stepped into the arena of coded and inflated language by signaling to anti-vax supporters that when and if the time came, she would be on their side. She did so by calling into question the efficacy of the FDA and the CDC, claiming that industry lobbyists and CEOs were doing great damage to these institutions. She said that because of this, these institutions could not be an unbiased source of information, and therefore, people should be understandably skeptical. If we place this language into the context of political discussions as a whole, it would fall under the fear-mongering tactics used by anti-vaxxers. That is why people believe that she is anti-vax. Furthermore, it is hyperbolic in that while it may be true we do have a ruling class comprised of CEOs 
and lobbyists, there is no evidence that the efficacy of these two institutions are compromised, especially whenever there are many drugs that could otherwise be useful that never see the light of day. We should then ask ourselves, what else do anti-vaxxers believe? Well, they often go off the erroneous and incorrect science that said a few years back that a specific type of vaccine was linked to autism. This was found not to be the case, yet we should ask ourselves, does Jill Stein also have concerns about autistic individuals? Well, in an interview with Elle magazine, Jill stated, there were these new epidemics of asthma and cancer and autism and diabetes and obesity, and I said to myself, hey, our genes didn't change overnight. My generation didn't have to deal with this. For a doctor, this is a very strange statement. After all, she should be well-versed in how diagnostics and treatments have changed over the last half century. Once again, as we dig through the fluff of what she said, we should understand that anti-vaxxers often call into question the trend in diagnosis of autism and its sources. It's not anything new, but they continue to believe it is. And Jill Stein is pandering to this mentality. Just from these two statements, we should be able to understand that Jill Stein is being deceptive and not stating her real beliefs for what purpose. Then on July 31st, she sent out a tweet stating, there is no link between vaccines and autism. This would be perfectly fine. This would indicate that she's not an anti-vaxxer, that she's not attempting to pander, and that it was all a misunderstanding to a certain degree. To me, there are still unforgivable things that she said, but it would be more understandable. However, five minutes later, she switched the tweet to say, I have not heard of any evidence linking autism to vaccines. One of them is concrete and understands that we have put out multiple studies that show there is no link between autism and vaccines. After all, we were forced to study that link because of bad science. And, once again, there is no link. However, she changed her beliefs so that she could continue to pander to a specific subsection of politics that believe there is possibly a link, whether it be because it's hidden by CEOs or lobbyists, or whether the FDA is corrupt and preventing the science from getting out, or whether the past science was actually true and was only redacted so that Big Pharma could continue to reap profits from vaccines, which actually isn't that profitable. This is a person that went from a concrete stance to one that was open-ended so that she would not lose followers. At the end of the day, if you are voting based on your ethics or morals, you should consider the way that Jill Stein is manipulating other people, abusing language, and attempting to pander to individuals that have no moralistic integrity and believe their individual lives are more important than everyone else's based on no evidence. Jill Stein's revolution is tainted. It's definitely not my revolution, but I hope that you stay safe no matter where you're going and what you're doing. 
and know that you are incredible. Until next time, bye.